question what is the number one greatest risk for someone with kidney disease someone would say infections others will say sugar and some will tell me that kidney disease itself is the biggest danger none of these answers will be completely wrong but what science identifies as the number one cause of morbidity and mortality in people with CKD is kind of shocking the number one danger for your life is the diet more specifically the amount of acid your diet creates so now the question is, is your diet creating more acid than your kidneys can remove? Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and a researcher in the field of kidney health. So the diet is the number one most significant modifiable factor for kidney disease outcome. What this means is that there are specific dietary changes that CKD patients could make that could have massive benefits for the health of their kidneys. And when I say massive, I really mean it. I've witnessed many patients that were able to achieve substantial improvements just by slashing their intake of acid. This is a comment from one of you guys. His name is Anthony Parr. He says, stage four was reversed to stage 3A. Thank you, I use acacia and baking soda. Yes, this kind of improvement is possible in all the stages of CKD and it's not easy. I know, but it's possible. So first of all, congratulations, Anthony, on your improvement. And of course, one of the main reasons why this man is able to see improvements in his kidney function instead of the entrance of a dialysis clinic is the simple fact that he's using baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. Because as I was saying, excess acid, which is caused by the diet and which can be removed with sodium bicarbonate, is basically the number one enemy of your kidneys. And this is proven by scientific research, by the way. Actually, there is a study that came out recently and that showed that sodium bicarbonate is even more effective than it was previously believed. CKD patients in this study were able to cut by two thirds their risk of creatinine levels increasing, as we can see here, just by taking sodium bicarbonate in an innovative way. So we will see more about the protocol they use in this study in this video because what I want to do today is answering the most important questions about acid load, the diet, sodium bicarbonate and more. By the way guys, I've just added a new feature on Double Okini that will let you support my work here. There is a little join button you can see right below my videos. What it does is giving your comments top priority to get a reply from me. Because I always try to answer as many comments as possible, but I can never answer them all. So consider joining the members of the channel and for less than the price of a cup of coffee, you will also be able to help me create more of the content you like. Okay, time to answer the question, is your diet creating more acid than your kidneys can remove? And are there symptoms we should pay attention to? And yeah, as we have seen, this is really a vital question. Unfortunately, when it comes to kidney disease, we should never rely on symptoms or feelings to gauge if our diet is too acid forming. Because you see, metabolic acidosis or too high amount of acid in the blood is very different from a simple heartburn. It doesn't really have symptoms for a long time. And when symptoms finally show up, we will see things such as vomiting, confusion, tachycardia, and a type of accelerated deep breathing called Kushner breath and at this point the patient will need to be rushed to the emergency room luckily for us there are many ways to understand if our diet is acid forming or alkaline without the need for hospitalization in an intensive care unit the very first thing you want to do here is a test called CO2 test, which is used to find your serum bicarbonate level. This test should be done as part of an electrolyte or basic metabolic panel and I really want you to know by heart what your level is. Seriously, always keep an eye on your bicarbonate level, alright? See if it goes up or if it goes down. 
This level will really tell you a lot about your diet, your supplementation, and your kidney health. Most importantly, never let this level go below 23 ml equivalents per liter. If that happens, dietary modifications and the supplementation of sodium bicarbonate will be needed. And I'm telling you this because lately I've seen a huge number of sickly patients that are not being tested for this most crucial marker. Many doctors, unfortunately, still go by the old rule of just helping the patient manage the symptoms until they reach dialysis but hey if your goal is not ending up in dialysis make sure you always know what your co2 your serum bicarbonate level is and watch the rest of the video because there are changes in the way you should take sodium bicarbonate you should know about before that there is a very important question many of you ask in the comment section is sodium bicarbonate safe or does it have too much sodium Sodium bicarbonate does actually contain some sodium in it. And of course, you absolutely need to limit your sodium intake if you have CKD. Excess sodium causes water retention and high blood pressure. But you see, while it has been proven that excess of salt in the diet is very bad for your blood pressure, sodium bicarbonate is not an issue if taken in the correct dose. In fact, if you need it, taking sodium bicarbonate will lower your blood pressure. This is what a recent study found out. Patients suffering from metabolic acidosis were able to lower their blood pressure by taking sodium bicarbonate. Amazing! And guys, if you think this info is useful, don't forget to like this video and to share it with a friend. But you see, even if sodium bicarbonate can really help lower blood pressure, it still contains sodium, all right? This means that if you don't have metabolic acidosis, you absolutely don't want to add the extra sodium this life-saving supplement contains to your diet. So do you remember what I just said about your serum bicarbonate level? You only need to take sodium bicarbonate if your serum bicarbonate level is below 23 ml equivalents per liter. Otherwise, do not add any extra sodium to your diet. But now you may ask, are there alternatives to sodium bicarbonate that do not contain any sodium? Yes, there is actually a supplement that could be a great alternative to sodium bicarbonate. This is magnesium oxide, one of the most underrated supplements on earth when it comes to kidney health. Most doctors, even nephrologists, don't know about it and many CKD patients are scared by it. And yet, magnesium can have a huge positive effect on kidney health. Magnesium is alkalizing, so it has an effect similar to that of sodium bicarbonate, but without the sodium. Magnesium also binds to phosphorus, meaning that it also helps removing one of the most dangerous kidney toxins. And it's also going to help with inflammation, and it will make you sleep better. And most importantly, magnesium deficiency is really common in CKD patients and it's actually linked to serious symptoms such as hypertension and insulin resistance. If that wasn't enough, a different study linked magnesium deficiency to increased risk of death. So either if you have diabetes or high blood pressure or you just want to keep your kidneys safe from metabolic acidosis, always supplement magnesium. But as I was saying, a lot of kidney patients and even doctors are misinformed about magnesium supplementation. So if you are taking expensive supplements such as magnesium orotate or something like that, but you are not getting the results, you may want to get informed about it. Luckily, in my recent video, I've answered the question, are you taking magnesium all wrong? And it's up here and also down in the description if you missed it. And of course, magnesium and bicarbonate are not the only things you can do to protect your kidneys from the most dangerous toxin. One of the most effective ways to manage your body acidity and decrease your need for sodium bicarbonate is the diet. So the next question is, what are the biggest sources of acid in the diet of a CKD patient? In the diet, the worst offenders when it comes to acid load are meat, fish, dairy, and all the other animal-based protein sources. Yes, even milk that some people use to fight heartburn, for example, is actually acid-forming when it metabolites reach the kidneys. Actually, the main reason why animal-based foods are acid-forming are amino acids containing sulfur, such as methanine and cysteine. These oxidize into sulfate that then creates sulfuric acid. By the way, sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. It was once known as vitriol. Today, sulfuric acid is still used as an industrial chemical and it's often diluted to create other acids that are not as destructive. So yeah, protein metabolism creates some of this very strong acid that dissolves completely in water. 
Now, the body needs bicarbonate to buffer this acid and the kidneys have the role of both reabsorbing bicarbonate and expelling this dangerous acid. This is why if your diet produces too much acidity for your kidneys to handle, you will see your serum bicarbonate levels decrease. Okay, but what does this mean in a practical way? Well, to put it simply, there are foods you need to avoid and foods you need to eat more often. If we look at this image, we can easily understand that there are foods people with CKD should completely avoid. Meat is the worst thing you can eat. Fish is just the same basically. Dairy is very bad as well. Then there are grains and they are almost neutral on this scale. Then we can find some foods that will actually decrease the acid load on the kidneys because they are alkaline forming. So question, what are the foods that actually remove acid? If your goal is protecting your kidneys from this dangerous acid, what you want to eat more of are fruit and veggies. Looking at this image, we can easily see that both fruit and veggies are on the right side of the chart, meaning that they have the benefit of protecting the kidneys from acid. But vegetables, greens in particular, are on the very top here. Some of the most alkaline vegetables include kohlrabi. This is a vegetable in the brassica oleracea family that comes either in green or purple and can be eaten raw or cooked. It is very alkaline at PRAL minus 5.6 and it is also rich in many of the micronutrients kidney disease patients are often deficient in. By the way, the PRAL is simply a way to measure the amount of acid a food adds to or removes from the body. The lower, the better. Another food with a great prowl score is the bell pepper. When eaten raw, peppers have a prowl score of minus 3.5 and they are low in calories and exceptionally rich in vitamin C, vitamin B6, folic acid, and other antioxidants. And this makes the bell pepper a great addition to any healthy diet. Now let's talk about green leafy vegetables. Many green leafy vegetables are incredibly healthy for you. They always take all the top spots in the Prowl score charts. Arugula, for example, has a Prowl score of minus 7.5, which is incredible. Arugula is a cousin of broccoli, kale, and cabbage and shares many of their health benefits, not to mention that arugula is also a source of nitrates, just like beets, for example. These foods have a vasodilating effect that actually improves blood flow and fights hypertension. Other greens you should always consider are lettuce, kale, celery, parsley, and mustard greens. Kale is actually very good in terms of prowl score as well, but spinach is probably the best food in terms of prowl score ever with a prowl of minus 14.0. So add as many veggies, greens in particular, to your diet. Okay, and now you may ask, what about people with diabetes? Should they take care of their acid alkaline balance as well? Many people with diabetes are worried that if they stop eating meat and start eating more veggies, their kidneys are going to suffer. But the opposite is actually true. Because you see, CKD patients with diabetes are actually more at risk for metabolic acidosis than anyone else. Because while CKD patients in general have problems with excess acid due to the fact that their kidneys cannot remove acid properly, those with diabetes also have another issue to worry about. You see, diabetes itself causes the production of more acid inside the body. This happens when the body needs to use fats for energy, right? Because do you know how the body turns dietary fat into energy? With the use of something called ketone bodies. Yeah, like in a keto diet. However, what they never tell you about that is that ketones are acids and while producing some of these acids is normal, sometimes people with diabetes start to make too much ketones. This happens when too much fat is being used for energy, which can be caused by not having enough insulin in the body or by not eating enough carbohydrates. So my advice here is to make sure you are always taking insulin if you need it and also don't take risks with high protein and high fat diets as they are not safe in case of kidney disease. Now guys, as I was saying in the beginning of the video, there are some recent changes in the way sodium bicarbonate is administered for best results. So question, what's new about sodium bicarbonate? Well, in the beginning of this video, we look at the study in which a huge number of patients were able to protect their kidneys just by taking sodium bicarbonate. It's interesting that in this study, they use a more scientific way to administer sodium bicarbonate than what most people actually do. 
Many kidney disease patients just take one gram of sodium bicarbonate one to three times a day with water and away from meals. For some patients, this could work, especially if their serum bicarbonate level is not too low to begin with, but there could be a better way. As we can see here, what they did in this study was simply to start from the CO2 level the patient had before the intervention and to use an equation to calculate how much sodium bicarbonate they needed every day. The idea was to get the patient to the ideal range, which is 24 to 28 milli equivalents per liter as fast as possible. So for example, if a patient had a bicarbonate level of 21, they would have been given 4,410 milligrams of sodium bicarbonate per day. They would have then increased the dose by 25% every week and tested again every week until the correct bicarbonate level was achieved. Now, I get that not everyone can get tested so often, but my advice is still do this test at least every few months. It's incredibly important that you are in the right range for this level. So if you are suffering from kidney disease stage 3 to 5 and you're not taking sodium bicarbonate, talk to your doctor and do this test. And guys, if you want more tips to improve your kidney health, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye!